many illnesses plague the human condition, the human being. And some, some uh, are not talked about enough in our societies, in our schools, in our educational frameworks. And I think gossip is definitely one of them. Gossip inherently can cause a lot of problems for oneself and others. And I don't think that uh, it is talked about enough or discussed enough. So I will discuss this. Sorry, I had to use headphones today. There's a bit of work going on in the background, which is quite noisy. Uh, so I, tr I hope the headphones uh, uh, remove all the, no the background noise. So the gossip contagion. The problem with gossip is it is contagious. Now, what is gossip? Now, there's a few definitions. There's a classic definition where the, the first definition is speaking about one a person when they're not around. So that person that you're speaking about is not there to defend themselves. Whether you're talking good or bad, whether you're talking about their private business or personal business. So then we also have to remember what a good friend is when we talk, when we consider talking about others when they're not there, right? The other definition of gossip is, for example, I would, uh, person A goes to person B and says, person C said this about you, then goes to person C and says, person B said this about you. And then person A becomes like a message the messenger and and tries to control debate or tries to control what's going the speech and or the information going from person B to C this not only happens on a personal level but it even happens like in our media in the news uh, in dipl in diplomatic uh, situations where <clears throat> a king or a pre or a prime minister or a president might send a messenger it's important, and sometimes the information is not presented clearly, and this can cause all kinds of things. Now, in a family, this causes a lot of problems as well because it's very personal. Family is very personal; it's close to the bone. I know this. I'm sure everybody else knows this. Uh, there was a very wise monk who said, "If you really want to see how wise you are, or how uh, spiritually evolved you are, go hang out with your family." <laughs> I think it's very apt. So, you know, there's that, there's, there's those two definitions. And the problem with gossip is con it's contagious. It's contagious. It's a disease that can spread and spread and spread. And uh, sometimes when we talk about other people and they're not around, we can go beyond what I say is reasonable. But even then, talking about someone when they're not around, uh, kind of takes away their ability to defend themselves to the other person. So you're only getting one point of view. So as the person being spoken to, if someone is gossiping to you, uh, one thing you've always got to keep in mind is that there's always two sides to the story. Not to make up your mind uh, when you listen to just one person because this can cause a lot of problems and will cause a lot of problems, especially on like a reactionary level, an emotional level, right? It's like someone dear to you might talk about someone else, like something that happened, and then without even hearing the other person's story or the other person's reasons, uh, you may do something that's that's not uh, wholesome. You may you may uh, you know strike out of the moral precepts. You might get out of the moral etiquette and create some bad karma for yourself. You know, or bad action. See, that's the thing we've got to talk about here is the Buddha says to refrain from gossips, right? To refrain from gossip. And then with gossip can come harsh speech as well. Harsh speech, the way I see it, is not just swear words because swear words or cuss words sometimes are just not harsh. Sometimes they just don't mean anything. It's the intention behind it, right? So... You know, cuss words can use in a can be used in a humorous way. It can be used in all sorts of ways, but it's basically the intention. And what harshness does is take away dignity. That's what I believe harshness is: is where you take away the dignity of the person, the dignity. Now, remember, in one of my previous videos, I was talking about resentment and revenge. Very important when you 
talk about anybody or you talk about subjects to some people is not to take away their dignity because this will cause you a lot of problems. And it also, you know, sometimes when we're talking to an enemy or someone we're not getting along with, it's very easy to dive into harsh words or trying to take that person's dignity away. I tell you, you're creating more problems for yourself. <clears throat> and you're basically closing down uh, any opportunity or any chance for things to get better or for peace to resume. That's why correct speech is always important, right? So remember, don't take away anyone's dignity if you can. Always speak in a dignified manner. Always bring the person respect, even if they're your enemy, because in the long run, they'll remember that. Uh, look at yourself, for example, when someone speaks to you respectfully and doesn't take away your dignity, even if it is a negative situation or a very emotional situation or a very hard situation, you'll always remember the person's kind words. You'll always remember that that person at that time, at that hard time, uh, showed you respect, even though you may not have even deserved it at the time, right? Right? So this is really important, right? So gossip is so contagious that it can infect many, many people. It doesn't take much. That's why like in the Sangha, in the Sangha, we, 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 it's really frowned upon uh, with gossip. In other words, uh, there's even a rule where monks can't be messengers, for example, like a lay person can't say to one monk, oh, could you please tell that other monk you know, hello from me. The other monk can't can't convey the message, can't uh, transfer the message <clears throat> or relay the message for you. You have to do it yourself. In other words, if you want to find out something, uh, find out for yourself from the from the source itself. It's like when you're doing research. Uh, you know, when you're researching uh, any article, you don't like, for example, if you want to use a search engine like Google. You don't stop at the first page. You you keep go. You keep digging and digging and digging, and what you're trying to look for is is things that contrast, the the contrasting things. And you also want to know hear some things where they're a little bit out there that don't, don't make any sense. Because sometimes those things on the periphery uh, can be truthful, can be the real news. Because remember that uh, when you research any topic or any information. Uh, you know, particularly, I guess, in a scientific way, there's always a consensus, but the consensus sometimes is very rigid and will not look at any other uh, evidence, right? Also, with people um, saying certain things, if they're being abused or in certain situations uh, and they may be frightened or, or in a situation where it's very difficult, there's a lot at stake, they may say things in a strange way. So try to lend an ear and try to pay attention to these things. I, I mean, that goes off topic of gossip, but I'm talking about, I guess I'm still talking about research and about information and about being uh, doing your due diligence when you're dealing with people. Because this is the thing we don't discuss much is dealing with people, dealing with the issues, how to confront these issues. Now, gossip is a big problem. It causes a lot of problems, right? Even if there is a problem, it causes more problems on top of the problem, right? So sometimes you might be arguing with someone and you want to get at that person. So you, you, argue, you, you try to get someone who's a comrade of yours or a, or a good friend of yours and you try to rile that person and get that person on your side. Well, what you've done there is just spread. You spread, you've just contaminated. You've just, you know, you've just been contagious with your negative situation, other you know, rather than just deal with it and contain it and contain it and deal with it and work at it yourself, what you did is spread it. It's like uh, you know the 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 broken belt that I'm talking about. This belt's not broken. What you've done is reacted and reverberated your your strife with everybody else. Now, I'm not saying you know sometimes strife you need help and there is you know the the extreme situations. Okay, you're being abused or you're being picked on as a kid or you're being bullied or there's some other stuff going, you know, more sinister stuff like up to the highest levels, right? Where someone of authority is abusing you or something like this or whatever, you're being threatened. So there's ways to deal with these situations, but it's not through gossip, right? Not through gossip. Now, gossip also means not true. 
It also, that's the third definition of gossip, is not speaking the truth. So in other words, if what you're saying about the other person is factual, it's correct, it's accurate, and said at the right time, then in that sense, it's not seen as gossip. But usually gossip is talking about things from a limited perspective, then spreading them, right? Or you're take, taking things out of context. Uh, I remember many, many before becoming a monk, I used to watch a lot of sports and uh, uh, particularly the one-on-one -on -one sports like boxing and uh, martial arts where the, the promotion would go and talk to one, to one, uh, to one like the, there's usually you know, two participants. And, and I say usually because in, in martial arts, it's all, it can be teams, it can be anything. But anyway, so a promoter goes and says, oh, this, your opponent said this and this about you. And, that, and this just fuels the flames. And then this promoter will, and this interviewer will go to the, sorry, it's the interviewer, not promoter. The interviewer will go to the other guy and say, well, he said this about you. And so they're fighting through the interviewer rather than dealing with it themselves. And then this gets out of hand, right? And it gets very violent. And this happens a lot in the schoolyard. It happens in high school. It happens in, in university. It happens in the family. It can happen at work. So in other words, if you want to be responsible, uh, a responsible human being, and you want to cause less trouble for yourself, uh, you know, don't engage in gossip. So in other words, don't go... Uh, creating problems between people or between countries if you're a diplomat or a politician listening to this make sure that when you're being uh, uh, or the police diplomacy is very important correct diplomacy is important otherwise you're going to cause more problems for a lot of people and uh, you know the second part of it is if the person or the or, or the representatives of a certain organization aren't there to defend themselves then then wait wait before you say anything unless it's factual accurate and correct right and the problem with gossip though if we, we're staying in the land of gossip is it's usually not true it's usually an emotional reaction where you're trying to clear your name or you're trying to uh, garnish support against someone else or you're trying to uh, I guess evade a situation or you're trying to lie your way out of something or, or something like that. There's there's so many uh, contagious issues with gossip. It's so it's such an unhealthy mental and verbal state um, that we don't give it enough thought. We don't give it enough attention. Right. So these last few videos, I'm trying to put attention on certain things that are very important in our individual lives of how we conduct ourselves with with people in general, with family, with friends, and to bring back to this moral etiquette or whether it has ever been there, but not in great detail because I certainly haven't talked about gossip at school and, or the other subjects I've talked about. Certainly don't get taught how important these things are. Now, communicating with human beings is absolutely important. Absolutely important. It's crucial. It's crucial that you get along with people in your society. So the idea is not to fan flames of hatred or fan the, fan the flames of... Um, false information which is gossip which is gossip and you don't want to fan the flames of of harsh with harsh speech as well because you don't want to take away people's dignity it all comes back and it'll all fall on you like a like a dump the truth cannot be hidden the buddha said right the truth cannot be there are three things three things that cannot be hidden the sun the moon and the truth or not be hidden for long they cannot be hidden right the truth is always out there that's why uh, when people want to ask me certain things, uh, if I don't if I don't want to talk about something, I just say I don't want to talk about something. I don't try to make up a story. I make it clear that I don't want to talk about that subject. Doesn't mean I'm hiding. Doesn't mean uh, it doesn't mean you're hiding when you say something like that. But you don't have to talk about things if you don't want to talk about them. That doesn't mean you're, you're lying. <clears throat> Sometimes you want to move on from certain things in your life or it's the person you're talking to it's just not relevant for example this is the internet you know and the internet uh, people have asked me um, in the background about family and things like this well look all you got to know just to sort this out once and for all um, for those who want to know right 
before I became a monk, I spoke to many senior monks about my personal situation, which every, uh, I guess, uh, person who's seeking to be a monk has to do. You have to, they will ask you, are you in debt? Uh, have you got a criminal record? Uh, do you have any diseases? Are you in good health? There's certain things. Uh, and are you divorced or are you married? All these kind of questions you will get asked before you become a monk. So if the preceptor uh, sees it as being okay after all, asking all these questions, then the preceptor can ordain you. So that's all you need to know about my past, okay, is that I was in a clear place to be able to become a monk. So I had all the qualifications to become a monk, and that's fine. There was no illegal activity, right? So I don't have a criminal record and all, all that kind of stuff, right? Not saying I was an angel, okay? Not saying I was an angel. I'm not saying I lived a perfect life. Lots of mistakes, lots of issues, lots of shortcomings, uh, lots of things like this, right? But what I'm doing now is talking, defending myself, right? So before people gossip about anything, I'm defending myself and putting it out there on a video so it stays there for a long time so people know, right? Because I've never ever talked about, I don't talk about personally. One thing I don't talk about is family, blood family. I don't talk about it on the internet. Um, I don't talk about it uh, in a public setting. Um, it's not necessary. Uh, family is sacred and, and uh, I don't gossip about my family and I don't gossip about and I don't talk about my experiences and all those kind of things. Also, another thing about gossip, you see, the problem is, right, even if you try to lie, there's always someone who knows the truth about your situation. Have you ever thought about that? There's always someone there who saw something, who saw the truth. So usually, usually the only way you can get away with stuff is if no one's around and no one sees it, right? But with that, we're talking about certain... I guess, data theft or things like this. But on other things, right? On other things like actions with other people, when it concerns other people, remember the other person was there, right? So it doesn't serve you any good. Like if you've had a bad experience with a person, with any person, it's between you and that person. In other words, they know what happened, you know what happened. When you bring a third party in, that's gossip as far as I'm concerned. Because how's a third person supposed to know what went on? They don't know. They weren't a witness to it unless they were watching from the outside. But do they know the background? Do they know the history? But then you have those spontaneous situations like you're walking into a store and someone might give you a slap in the head kind of thing. Okay, for that, you need legal uh, witnesses if you want to take it to court and things like this. Okay, so this is where, you know, it's not really, this is where factual, actual and correct are important. But the gossip is more, on, I guess on the emotion, on the relationship level, um, it's more on the, uh, it's also on the news level, making sure that you're not gossiping about things that, you know, that are not true, that are factual, actual. And we're getting that <clears throat> a lot. You don't know who to listen to these days. There's, the trust has been gone for a long time from even media or from <clears throat> authorities because we don't know who's telling the truth anymore, right? This is a big problem, big problem. In terms of gossip and, 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 and coming back to uh, the relationships in terms of gossip, gossip can also be very uh, detrimental and destructive, especially when you're in intimate relationships with people, okay? Because it's easy to talk to other people, but I've been in relationships before. You can never, ever convey to someone outside of the relationship what's really going on, for example, right? And... If you're one of those people that get talked to by a married couple or by people in relationships, be careful. Be really, really careful because you will never know what's going on 100%, right? And this is something I learned a long time ago and I'm seeing more and more as, as well you know, through myself. It's like you, can, you can't really tell someone outside of the relationship what's happening 100% and that person can never get a grip on what's going on, right? On really what's going on. Remember, there's all sorts of reasons why people stick together. Like there's always, why is that person staying with that person? Why is that person staying with that person? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You don't know what goes on behind closed doors. 
you know, some relationships last long because there's the, the physical intimacy is good for them. But most people are not going to tell you that. A lot of people aren't going to tell you what's really going on behind the scenes. Uh, because there's a lot of interconnected things going on. You know, relationships are complex, right? This is what we need to teach our kids. This is what we need to talk about, the complexity, the difficulty of relationships. This is why we need to cut out all the things that are detrimental, that will that are negative, that <clears throat> lead to destruction, not construction. <clears throat> Gossip is definitely one of them. So if you have someone um, talking to you about their marriage or their relationship <clears throat> with someone else, be careful. Be careful. Usually, I think the best thing to say is, look, the best thing to do is, <clears throat> if, if you want to talk to me about it, I want to have the other person present as well. That'll shake it up. That'll really, that'll really show you if the person's talking real or not, if they're being sneaky or trying to get you on side or trying to get a one-up, right? The other thing is, as the listener, you, you can listen as much as you want, but will you really know what's going on in that web in terms of a relationship between someone and someone else? Now, you won't really know. That's why it's better to, uh, unless the situation, like I always say, <clears throat> degrees, right? Unless the situation is extreme, someone, like if a child is telling you they're being abused or they're giving you hints they're being sexually abused or exploited or something like that, you need to listen because it's difficult to, 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 to say this to an adult. Things like this or, so, you know, a spouse is being, and I'm talking male and female, right? It's not just males that abuse females. Females abuse males as well, right? We're seeing that more and more, right? The evidence of it. So in these situations, sure, get involved, protect, no problem. But in terms of like when it comes to emotional, like the usual stuff, oh, we're not getting along because that uh, my partner wants to buy a new house and I don't want to buy a new house, that kind of thing, right? Or, you know, they want to go to dinner every night and I don't want to go to dinner because I'm not making enough money, that kind of thing right well uh be careful be careful right be careful with all that stuff um, and and relationships between friends right now in business it's a little bit easier i would say because there's a legality to it <clears throat> to, to some extent to some extent and i guess there's a boss who controls it and this and that but there's there is a lot of play in corporate environments in business um <clears throat> that's for sure but even then Remember, the more enemies you have, the worse it is for yourself. So the idea is to try to cut it out. Where you can't, like I said before, you cannot, you cannot have friends everywhere. It's very difficult. I mean, when I say cannot, I'm not saying that's impossible. You can do whatever you like and I wish you the best. But what I'm saying, it's hard to win everybody over. But even the people that you can't win over and you don't get along with, don't take away their dignity. Don't gossip about them. You, you'll cause yourself a better tomorrow. It's more, more worthwhile for, you, for yourself tomorrow because they've got nothing on you. They've got nothing on you, right? Where even when an enemy is respectful, you remember that, right? You remember that. You remember that they didn't take away your dignity. They were respectful for you. It's like when you're in a, in a fist fight, when you fall to the ground and the opponent does not kick you while you're down. You'll know that. You'll remember that for a long time. Though you might hate it, whatever, but you remember that. You remember that that person kn kn knew you had enough. Or they might get you in a headlock and you tap the person and that person lets go, right? The person in the headlock will remember that respect. But instead what we're getting is stomping and just choking the person out, destroying them. Now you've caused yourself a lot more problems. So this is why it's really important to conduct ourselves with moral etiquette. And I think... You know, uh, in terms of gossip, be careful, right? Be careful of the gossip contagion. If you ever feel like gossiping um, or you, or someone's gossiping to you, remember, remember Bhante Ji said, be careful of the, the, the gossip contagion. Be aware of it and live a better life and try to point your, all your behavior in a wholesome way. You know, use your moral etiquette to begin with and then as the base, as the fundamental and then, of course, use all the other factors of the path.